wheels. But wheelie technique can be a great help when tackling off-road obstacles. Probably though, you'll just want a wheelie for fun. The most important difference you'll discover when coming from dirt bikes to ATVs will be the amount of body English you'll need to control the vehicle. With any kind of ATV, body position is the key to safe handling, and safe handling is the key to having fun. Wheelies not only look spectacular, but are an effective way to handle obstacles in both motocross and general off-road riding. Let's start with some basic wheelie technique. One of the best ways to learn how to loft the front end is by practicing first on a hill. When you're on an incline, it's easier to lift the front wheel than when you're on flat ground. Of course, leave it to Larry Rosser to pick this mountain as his practice hill. The art of wheeling is based on these four principles. Good body position proper throttle control, adequate use of the clutch, and balanced braking. If you can, keep your body in the middle of the bike. The higher the front wheel, the closer you should be to the tank. Use your arms and legs to help distribute your weight to maintain balance. And don't try to hot dog it right away. One false move and you might lose it. For pros and beginners, equilibrium is everything. Throttle control is equally important. Practice giving it just enough gas so that you can keep the front end up without going over backwards. And feather the clutch to stay in the power band. The most crucial part of wheeling is careful use of the rear brake. Don't use the front brake. The rear brake is the only thing that keeps you from looping out. Now, take those wheelie basics and head to the racetrack. With the power wheelie out of a turn, first rail out of the corner, snap the clutch, then pin the throttle to the stops. Keep the front end light so that only the rear wheel touches the track. If there's a whoop section after the corner, loft the front wheel and let the rear wheel skip over the bumps. The result is both smoother and faster. In general off-road riding, wheelies will help you get over obstacles like ledges. When crossing unexpected gullies, keep the front wheel high, pull back on the bars, flip the throttle and unload by standing up. And remember to keep your speed up on approach. Sometimes you can use a power wheelie to get across ruts and ditches. Speed is essential. Even on a drop-off, keep the front high to avoid into it. Wheelies are also effective in clearing logs and bushes. Just lopped up and over. A lot of riders like to wheelie across water, but we found that a high-speed assault can be much easier and drier. But watch out for hidden obstacles. So whether you're just kicking loose, or getting in some serious riding, these are the elements of wheelie technique to keep in mind. Braking, use the rear brake to keep from looping out. Body position, use your whole body to maintain equilibrium. Throttle and clutch control, sustain a balance between momentum and the height of the front wheel. Sliding, pitching it, backing it in. Getting sideways can be a real blast, but it's not just a way to have fun. Learning proper sliding technique is the way to make cornering your ATV both safer and easier. When it comes to corners, it's important to understand the differences in handling between two, three, and four wheelers. For instance, you might think that big wheelers react more like motorcycles while turning, but you'll probably have to manhandle a BW just to make it slide. And body position is even more critical on a three-wheeler. You have to shift your weight to the inside of the corner. A lot of riders find four-wheelers easier to corner, but you still have to lean into the turn. Corners call for power slides or braking slides. With a power slide, you have to stay on the gas and muscle the bars to control the pitch. On a three-wheeler, get off the seat and shift your weight well to the inside to keep the rear wheels down. And if you start to high side, roll off the throttle before things get out of hand. Once you've chosen a line, pour on the power and feather the clutch if the engine starts to bog. With any kind of slide, don't try to change direction or come off the gas suddenly. You could stall, high side, or even overshoot your mark. And big wheelers have a mind of their own when it comes to turning. You have to use your whole body to help you make the corner. At this speed, it might be better to downshift than to clutch it to maintain your momentum. And remember, only on a two-wheeler can you extend your leg for balance. In a tight turn, body position is even more critical for both three and four wheelers. Three wheelers should weight the outside peg while still leaning hard to the inside. Because if you don't shift your weight, the bike will spit you off. 
The same goes for a four-wheeler, especially in a rut-infested uphill corner like this one. To brake slide, first clutch it and downshift to avoid stalling. Give it some throttle and use the rear brake to slow you down, then pop the clutch and gas it. Four-wheelers often have a tendency to spin out. Use the clutch and front brake to maintain control. BWs and three-wheelers can use the front brake on approach, but they should only use the rear brake when turning. Front braking cuts into your momentum and inhibits your sliding power. You could wash out, nosedive, or even stall. As you know, races can be won or lost in the corner. When you're in the lead, you can shut the door on your opponent by sliding right into his line. Or, in this case, the leader takes the inside going in, then blocks the faster outside line. This forces the other rider to spin out when he tries to avoid a collision. So whether you're on a two, three, or four wheeler, concentrate on clutch and throttle control with a power slide and good body position with a braking slide. And if you can, try practicing on sand. Mastering these techniques will help you get sideways only when you want to get sideways. Ask any ATV rider which obstacle gives you the most trouble. And 10 to 1, he'll tell you, jumps. Definitely off cambers. Both jumps and off cambers. Yes, these obstacles can be tough, but we'll show you how to handle them. A lot of new riders avoid jumps because they can be kind of tricky. But once you get the hang of it, you'll never go back to the flat. Whether you're racing on a track or riding on a trail, you'll need good body position and throttle control to make the jump. With any kind of ATV, you should approach the takeoff ramp in a neutral position, wheel straight, weight centered. When you reach the lip of the jump, flip the throttle to help you get airborne. But in midair, stay off the gas unless your front end starts to drop. It's better to have the back wheel slightly lower than the front, both in the air and on landing. Remember, if you jump crooked, you'll land crooked. Correct your position in the air by tilting to the opposite side. And landing, that's the critical part of every jump. Big wheelers, be prepared for turbulence. These babies bounce. Three wheelers, make sure that both rear tires hit at the same time. If not, you'll end o or high side. Watch how you land on four wheelers. Their weight is more central, but you can still flip. Once you've touched down, gas it right away to minimize rebound. If there's a berm turn next, you can stay on the throttle. But if it's a tight turn, just brake slide it around the curb. Jumping tabletops is different. Get back on approach, then lean forward as you clear the ramp. Try to land level with the downward slope. Blind jumps like this can be dangerous because you can't see what's on the other side. If you blitz over the top, you might not be able to handle what's waiting on the down slope. Off cambers are another kind of obstacle that always give a rider the willies. Again, body position and throttle control are key. However, even more than with jumps, off camber technique is very different depending on the kind of ATV. Big wheel riders should lean into the hill, holding the bike out and away from the slope. Your rear tire can lose traction and slip downhill, so don't gas it suddenly or go too slow either. Keep a steady speed and extend your leg for balance. With three wheelers, body English is everything. Don't be afraid to shift to the inside as far as you can. Weight both the rear wheel and the foot peg. Too much gas or not enough leaning and your tires will slip. Regain control by turning the front wheel slightly uphill. Quads have the fourth wheel advantage that keeps the bike more in line with the slant. Although the weight bias is central, you still have to shift your body sideways to keep you tracking straight. And too much throttle can get four-wheelers spinning donuts too. So whether you're in the air or on the ground, be sure to use body position and throttle control if you want to stay on course. Hills are the kind of obstacle everyone wants to take on. There's just something about a hill that's naturally challenging. The steeper, the rockier, the ruddier it is, the more satisfied you feel when you make it to the top. There are no hard, fast rules about hill climbing. Every hill is different. But there are some basic tricks.